YouTube favorite ex-girlfriend Tessa and today we are talking nightmares. <laughs> one horrifying one in particular, dating in your 30s. <laughs> Now pick your jaw up off the floor because I know you're probably thinking right now, what? You, Tessa, our favorite ex-girlfriend are in your 30s? You don't look a day past 26 and a half. I could pass for 26 and a half, <laughs> right? But I'm actually, uh -huh, I'm 33 and still coming to terms with it. Hi, my name is Tessa and I'm in my 30s. And I also need y'all to subscribe to my shit real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, thanks. So let's get down to it. We are talking dating in your 30s, but 20-somethings, feel free to watch this too for preventable measures. Freaking idiot. And 40-somethings and up, feel free to watch this in case you're trying to get your cougar action on because it ain't 1994 anymore, okay? We're talking millennials. Now, to give you guys some background info on my history, because like, why the f should you be listening to me, right? <laughs> well, here's why. I have been dating for 20 years. Boys, girls, men, women, the devil ones. I was even married for five years. <laughs> I was cute. But once that was over and I re-entered the single society at the age of 30, I quickly realized it was different. Not just for me, but for all my friends as well. They were so sweet to get divorced with me all at the same time. <laughs> Our 20s were wild. Now, there's a lot of friends that did stay married or never got married, but each and every one has a hell of a dating backstory. And realizing that is going to kick off these seven tips for dating in your 30s. Because tip number one is accepting that everyone has a past. We're in our 30s, okay? A lot of shit has gone down by now. And a lot of that shit has affected the way that we approach our dating techniques. So you can't expect every person you meet to be on the same page as you when it comes to dating. And that's why tip number two is to have an upfront conversation from the jump. Now I'm not saying you'll need to sit down and map out the amount of children you wanna have together, but if this is a person you're trying to get to know as a potential match, it would be beneficial to find out their expectations sooner rather than later. And what I mean by that is with our very dating past, we all have different goals when it comes to dating. Some of us just want a cool friends with benefits. Others want a lifelong partner. And the rest of y'all don't even know what the hell you want and will end up over the rest of us because of it. Isn't dating in your 30s fun? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I meant traumatic. Full disclosure, folks. Now, a huge difference between dating in your 30s and dating in your 20s is that when you're in your 20s, the sky's the limit. The possibilities are endless and everyone tells you to never settle. You have time. But then you turn 30 and everyone stops encouraging the single life and starts feeling real bad for you. You start to feel this pressure to pair up as this horrifying realization dawns on you that you can be alone forever. And that's why tip number three is to realize the joys of being single. Now, I know I said I was gonna do a whole video on that because you know your girl loves the single life, but here's the thing, I'm a lazy bitch. But I'm gonna get right on that. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, find comfort in being alone. It was all the rage when we were 25, why not now? Because our parents want grandchildren? F them. We wanted trauma-free childhoods, but how many of us actually got those? There is nothing wrong with being single in your 30s. Should I say it? Do you want me to? There is nothing wrong with being single in your 30s. You guys really need to hear that because one of the biggest dating mistakes we can make in our 30s is coupling up just to check a box. Date because you want love, companionship, and your back blown out. Not because you think it's what you should be doing right now. Dating yourself is important too. That's why I keep telling myself. Moving on, let's talk about online dating. You're doing it right? Because it's 2020 and we've spent most of our year in quarantine. So if you're one of those people that are all like, I don't wanna meet my future father of my children on an app, well, good luck to you in your dating endeavors. I hope the person of your dreams breaks into your house and finds you, because that might be the only way you're finding them. Look, I know no one wants their meet cute story to be like, well, we swiped right on each other while sitting at home in our pajamas eating stale Doritos and it was love ever since. But tip number four for my 30s lovers is if you are trying to intentionally date, you need to get intentional. 
all. We're in our 30s, okay? Where the f are we supposed to meet potential partners? The club? Yeah, that's promising. Look, all I'm saying is just be open to various possibilities of connection. And that goes for my tech crazy lovers that only use apps to find their partners. I suggest you put down the phone for a second and look around because your dream person might be IRL. But back to online dating, here's why I love it. Not only does it show a plethora of dating choices that you know are single and looking, but it also provides information like career goals and interests, info that you can't get from drunk grinding on somebody at the club. Now I don't know about y'all, but I appreciate that these apps do my online stalking for me beforehand. I'm a so stocky though. <laughs> yeah, I am. So that's why I'm an advocate for online dating, but if you still swear against those apps, well then just make sure to unlock your door at night so Bay can break in and sweep you off your feet. Good luck. Now for a lot of us, dating in our 30s feels a lot more grounded, more secure. I mean, we have loads of wisdom and life experience under our belt, which means we know what we want and what we don't want in life and in a partner. I mean, we all basically have a mental list of our perfect match, right? Bullet points are like tall, dark, handsome. So what you should do with that list now is take it and rip it the f up because tip number five is be open to dating someone who isn't your type. We all tend to put so much focus on what looks good on paper over what feels good in real life. So ditch your list and be open to the inner traits of a person because the best ones, the ones that match ours, might just come in a package you don't expect. You still gonna sign for it though? <laughs> I've gotten so corny with old age. Anyways, for us experienced daters, we've been doing this for a minute and therefore have probably racked up one or two or 30 dating rules that we like to follow. You know, wait three days to call, don't text them before they text you, don't on the first date, Y'all know the rules I'm talking about. So tip number six is to ditch them. Now you guys know I'm a sucker for boundaries, so please make no mistake. Keep your boundaries, ditch your rules. Boundaries protect you. Rules get in the way of you finding a meaningful connection. And just like the people we're dating, every situation is different. So play to that. Or while you're waiting three days to call, I'ma steal your bed. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go wrap this up so I can go self-sabotage my next relationship. <laughs> what? Those who can't do teach? And while y'all sitting over there laughing at me, why don't we tally up how many relationships you self-sabotage? It's just tough love, baby. I'm just trying to get you to a new level. <laughs> an enlightened level. Now believe it or not, you're already halfway there just by being older and wiser. Which is why final dating tip number seven is to listen to your intuition. Listen to that bitch. It's literally there to guide us. But in our 20s, we ain't ready to hear it yet. You know all those relationships back then where we just ignored all the red flags and turned a blind eye to all of our partner's horrendous qualities in the hopes that one day they would magically turn into our perfect match? What the f*** were we doing? It doesn't matter, because we're not there anymore. And we have a whole extra decade of dating experiences. So now that we know better, we can listen to our inner nudges telling us what the f*** is up. Because deep down, we all know what's best for us. We know. We know. And there you have it, my top seven tips for dating in your 30s. Mommy might have some visitors, okay? It might get noisy, but you just stay in the closet. You mind your business, okay? Mommy needs love too. Now for those of you who watch this video and still think dating is hard, I just want to skip to marriage. Well, you missed the f***ing point. Dating isn't supposed to be hard and exhausting. It should be fun and freeing. And if it's not for you, then take a step back from it and figure out what it is you really want before going to find it. And also, as a former married woman, it ain't all it's cracked up to be. All those happy, loving Facebook posts you see, let's just say a lot of married folks envy us, okay? So tune your mind from dwelling on the pressures of the future and focus on the fun of right now because you're missing it. And eventually we're gonna be in our 40s, so. No, I'm not ready to go there. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time. This is the part where you realize I'm a motherfucking dating advice goddess and subscribe to a bitch. As for me, I think I just convinced myself to redownload Hinge. 